Hello everyone and welcome back to the good stuff. It's the Morphe saga and in this game we're going to cover uh, in this video we're going to cover a game between Paul Charles Morphe and uh, Hungarian master Johan Jakob Löwenthal. And uh, in the previous uh, video you've seen uh, Morphe's game against his father at a rather young age to see that he was already uh, able of producing some uh, some good moves. Uh, but here Morphe is already 12 years old. Uh, this uh, match has been played uh, almost uh, Mor Morphe almost uh, had his uh, 13th, uh, 13th birthday. So uh, almost almost uh, 13. Uh, but uh, okay, he, he's playing against his first real opponent. So so far, okay, he's been beating his father. He defeated the army general Scott that we mentioned. He's been beating uh, uh, his uncle Ernest Morphy, uh, and he's been beating him even blindfold as uh, uh, for, since he was 11. Uh, he's been beating his grandpa with rook odds. So this is Morphy's first actual opponent. Now, uh, like I said, he's from Hungary, but he was expelled from Hungary in 1849, and he only arrived in North America. Uh, uh, on 29th of December, so uh, prior to New Year's Eve, and uh, he didn't know anyone, he didn't know any friends, but uh, people really accepted him, and uh, since he was a known chess master, they uh, took him to uh, a lot of chess playing uh, sites uh, and introduced him to a lot of people. So this is how uh, he was invited to, to the home of the Morphys, and uh, he uh, was brought here to, uh, to face Paul, Paul Morphy himself. Although, okay, in those days it wasn't really Paul Morphy himself because here Mor Morphy is the challenger as he is, he's the one facing the master. So uh, that being said, uh, let's uh, check out this very nice game. So this is the first game in the match. Um, some people say that there were three games in this match. Some people say that there were two. Uh, the general consensus is that there were actually three, three games in this match. Uh, but we are going to cover that uh, uh, sometimes later. So Morphy opens with e4, uh, as he usually does. We have e5 by Loventhal, knight f3, uh, knight to f6, and now uh, knight captures on e5. Uh, so the Petrov is on the board, and this is a, a modern approach to the Petrov. And thank you for correcting me. Uh, in my previous video, I often said New Orleans, and it's uh, uh, you guys said it's actually New Orleans. So thank you for that. Uh, I, I blame the House of the Rising Sun for that. Uh, but okay, uh, we have d6 pushing the knight back, knight f3, and now knight captures on e4. So uh, pretty much as if we were watching a game played in 2019. Queen e2, Morphy attacks the knight, we have queen to e7 defending, and now d3. Uh, Morphy kicks the knight back, knight f6, uh, and now uh, knight to c3. So it's, uh, it's uh, that uh, you don't want to capture because you help black develop, and black doesn't want to capture because he helps white develop. So bishop to e6, and now bishop to g5 by Morphy with h6, uh, and here Morphy captures with bishop captures on f6, queen captures on f6, and d4, uh, grabbing more space in the center as you will want to develop your light square bishop, so it uh, makes sense to, uh, to, to open up this diagonal. Uh, we have c6 by Leventhal, and uh, it is as of move 10 that this position uh, was never repeated again. So we have queenside castle by Morphy, and now d5, grabbing also more space in the center, uh, making room for the dark square bishop to be developed. Uh, we have knight to e5 by Morphy, and here bishop to b4. And already here, Morphy plays a most interesting move, uh, one uh, modern masters might not uh, even consider, uh, but here Morphy plays knight captures on d5. Now, of course, if you capture the knight with the pawn, then queen b5 check, uh, picks up the bishop, and, well, it's not a problem, you just grab the clean pawn, uh, you, you are good to go. However, uh, Leventhal played bishop captures on d5, and he said, okay, I don't mind, uh, I grabbed a piece, uh, you can have your knight to g6 check. Uh, this is what Morphy played, and now uh, Leventhal blocks with the queen. Queen to e6, uh, and here we have knight captures on h8. So Morphy grabs a rook, However, after queen captures on e2, bishop captures and king to f8, now Leventhal, uh, a very strong master, knows that two pieces are better than a rook. Uh, and here, Morphy plays a3. Now, if you, uh, if you uh, absolutely want to play this uh, position to perfection, uh, this is actually a good idea by Morphy that he decided to give up two pieces for the rook. Uh, however, you have to play it uh, with c4, uh, although asking, uh, well, Ask, this is asking a lot even for modern players. Uh, bishop to e6, d5, c captures on d5, and now bishop to f3, where if the pawn captures or moves, you win uh, the, the b7 pawn and the rook. So here you would uh, see king g8, bishop captures on d5, bishop captures, rook captures. Now you cannot capture, as rook to d8 would uh, prevent black from ever developing the queen side. 
bishop to e7 preventing this and now knight captures on f7 uh, you have to win at least some material uh, if you're gonna give up uh, the knight king captures and rook to e1 so this is uh, basically playing the, the position to perfection uh, you would have two rooks against the rook knight and the bishop but the two rooks are extremely active and uh, well white is slightly better here uh, you are up two pawns for your uh, for your sacrifice material morphy played it a bit differently he played a3 uh, we have bishop to d6 and now bishop to d3 and okay king g8 by Leventhal, and here morphy grabs knight captures we have king captures and now f3 uh not allowing any captures here so it's basically the same thing morphy still has two rooks uh for uh, morphy still has a rook for two pieces and uh, he's uh, he's up two pawns uh, but the difference is uh, Morphy's rooks are not so active and, uh, well, his opponent still has the bishop pair. So, okay, b5 by Leventhal and now bishop to e4. Morphy wants Leventhal to capture so he can improve uh, his center. Knight to d7, Leventhal continues developing and now rook d to e1. We have knight to f6 putting pressure on the bishop and now rook to e2. Preparing to bring the other rook uh, uh, into the game. We have rook to e8 and here... Uh, well, mostly uh, rook h to e1 is of course to be considered, uh, you might even consider it an automatic. The problem is after bishop captures and f captures, you have bishop captures on h2. So although you have a very nice center, e f c f c3 will be played, you don't want to give up uh, a pawn as you're already down material. So after rook to e8, Morphy decides for bishop captures on d5 with check. We have c captures on d5, rook captures on e8, king, uh, sorry, knight captures on e8, and now g3. Uh, now the rook can get into the game as there is no bishop captures on h2. So here, uh, I find this game high, uh, very impressive as this is uh, Morphy's first game ever, uh, especially Morphy's first endgame ever against a real chess master. So here we have g5 by Leventhal and now king d2. Morphy brings the king into the game. We have knight to g7 and now... Although the E file is the only open file on the board, and yes, rooks do belong on open files, problem is uh, here the, uh, the bishop, knight, and pawn uh, control all of the squares uh, you can use. So all of these squares are not available to the rook. So here Morphy plays rook to a1 instead. And uh, he, he prepares a4, uh, which of course makes sense. Uh, we have a5 now preparing to meet a4 with b4. Now Morphy improves the position of the king even further, king d3. We have king e6, Leventhal does the same, and now a4. Uh, Morphy wants to uh, bust open through the, e, through the a file with his rook. We have b4, and now again with, with, uh, with absolute engine precision, Morphy goes c4. Uh, and here, of course, if d captures king captures, you improve the position of the king a bit too much. So here, Leventhal goes bishop to c7 instead, but now rook to e1 check. King d6 now blocking bishop's control of the e5 square and now rook e5. Morphy now prepares to capture on e5 and now dc4 is uh, is forced. So d captures on c4, king captures. Morphy improves the position of his king even further and now knight to e6 by Leventhal. Uh, we have rook to b5, uh, putting black in sort of a little tsuk He doesn't allow uh, the bishop any moves. Uh, so you have to you have to play something else either go back with the knight or go back with the king here uh, Leventhal plays knight back to f8 and only now rook d5 check we have king to e6 rook to c5 morphy uh, puts the rook on c5 now king back to d6 by Leventhal and now d5 uh, grabbing even more space rook to c6 coming with winning of the h6 pawn so king to d7 not allowing that you will be able to block with the bishop but now rook to c6 just the same uh, we have bishop to d6, but now rook to a6. The bishop cannot uh, keep blocking the path towards uh, the h6 pawn and also uh, not allow capture of the a5 pawn. So here, uh, if you move the bishop, of course, you lose the h6 pawn. So uh, knight to g6 is played. We have rook captures on a5 by Morphy and now knight to e5 with check. King to b5 and now b3. Uh, not allowing this uh, the b pawn to be pushed and also uh, Leventhal is hoping for something like knight d3 captures the pawn and then maybe promoting the b pawn uh, we have rook to a7 by Morphy with check king to d8 and now f4 uh, pushing the knight back now no longer allowing even knight captures on f3 g captures we have g captures and now knight to d3 going after the b2 pawn but now king to c4 
uh, attacking the knight uh, here. Uh, of course, you could capture here, but then just king captures on b3, and the knight is kicked away. Although it does make sense to capture here, king captures and then re retrieve with the knight. Okay, Leventhal goes knight captures on f4 instead. Uh, and Morphe just goes rook to h7. There's always time to capture here, and uh, so for the moment your d5 pawn would be hanging. So bishop b5 preparing to capture on b2, now Morphe captures on h6. Rook captures on h6, we have bishop captures on b2, and now king captures on b3. Uh, we have bish bishop to g7 attacking the rook, rook to h7, and here uh, we have bishop to e5 as the bishop is under attack. So feel free to pause the video, what would you play here? Uh, well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so for those of you who decided... Uh, that uh, king to c4 is the best move. It is playable, but there is no there is no need to capture uh, on d uh, uh, on d5. Absolute best is a5. This is what Morphy played, and congratulations to everyone who also decided that a5 was best. Uh, so uh, king, uh, well, now that a5 has been played, uh, there's the question: Why not capture the pawn? Well, of course, uh, if you capture the pawn, then uh, rook h5 simply uh, attacks two pieces and there's not much to be done here. If you don't capture the pawn, you are up against uh, three pawns. So let's explore the option. If you continue king c8, you just play a6, king b8, now you go king c4, uh, bishop to d6, not allowing the king to c5, but now h4, and now h5, h6, and you will not be able to uh, keep an eye on all of the three pawns. So instead, uh, Lowenthal knew that he was lost here, he decided for knight captures on d5, uh, but uh, Morphy, of course, uh, played uh, rook to h5, I, I only imagine he played it instantly. Bishop captures on h2, but now rook captures on d5 with check. King to c8, and now rook to b5, not allowing the king to cross the b-file. King c7, and here Morphy played a6. And it was in this position on move 55 that Hungarian master uh, Johann Jakob Leventhal uh, resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, for those of you who are maybe new to chess, we are just going to play it out. If bishop g1 preventing the pawn to reach a7, king c4, you're gonna go king c6 or something, rook b7, it's important to guard the a7 square. Bishop somewhere, doesn't really matter, you're gonna move the rook, rook g7, and next move uh, a7 is coming, whatever. Black plays, bishop goes back, you will play a7, now you have to capture, and after rook captures, it is of course uh, a winning endgame for white. So of course, uh, Leventhal knew, th knew this, and after a6, uh, he he resigned the game. So this is the first game of the match, Morphy Leventhal, and uh, well, I, I'm sure uh, Leventhal did not expect much from Morphy, but after this game, it's uh, very uh, interesting to see what will happen in the next game and how will uh, Leventhal approach it and will he take it uh, more seriously? Uh, because here, uh, it was uh, one of the one of the rarer cases where, uh, well, not not so much rarer, but here, for example, uh, it was really enjoyable. For example, here. Uh, f4 captures captures uh, how how the rook was completely dominating uh, the, the the bishop and the knight there was uh, there was nothing to be done here especially here after rook to c6 for example both the bishop and knight are, are dominated and the king has just a free, free entry into the game but okay it wasn't just a rook for two pieces uh, for two minor pieces it was a rook for two minor pieces and Morphe was up two pawns that's a big big difference so yeah, uh, like I said, after this a6 move, Leventhal resigned and a uh, brilliant victory for Paul Morphy in his first ever game against uh, a renowned chess master. So we're going to continue this match, Morphy Leventhal, uh, uh, well, in, in, into the series. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the game and it was really, really impressive how, how Morphy played the end game. He didn't know any, uh, I, I imagine there were no principles back then, Morphy created principles when he played. He didn't know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, two, two minor pieces are better than a rook. He just played the position, and in this position, he, he knew that the rook will be will be stronger than the two minor pieces. So I, I find that incredibly impressive, and we're, we're going to check out the other game, as in the other game, uh, Loventhal will go for the Sicilian defense. So, you know, uh, prepare for that. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank Julian Yosef Zadeh for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Morphe saga and of course following whatever is currently happening in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.